Here's our first definition for the trigonometric functions. If theta is an angle in standard position and the point xy is any point on the terminal side of theta other than the origin, then the sine of theta, and this is the abbreviation for sine, it's usually spelled S-I-N-E, but sine theta is the y-coordinate divided by r, cosine of theta is defined to be the x-coordinate divided by r, the tangent of theta is y divided by x, cotangent of theta, x divided by y, secant of theta, r divided by theta, and cosecant of theta, r divided by y. So these are our six trigonometric functions, and these are their definitions. And as you can see, they're simply all the ratios that you can make out of the three numbers x, y, and r, where x and y are the x and y coordinates of any point on the terminal side of theta, and r is the distance from the origin out to theta. So here's our angle theta in standard position, vertex at the origin, initial side along the positive x-axis. This is the terminal side, x, y is a point on the terminal side, r is the distance from zero from the origin out to the point x, y. And we have this relationship, of course, r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. Now, these are definitions right here for the six trigonometric functions, and what you want to do with them is memorize them. The sine of theta is always the y-coordinate divided by r. That's not going to change, so we need to have that memorized. Cosine theta x over r, tangent theta y over x, where x, y, and r are um, shown in this diagram right here. Now, cotangent theta is x over r, secant theta r over x, cosecant theta r over y, and as you'll see when we get into the next section, there's some identities that we can use to find these three trigonometric functions if we're given these three right here. Now, like I say, what you need to do with this definition is memorize it. A lot of the students that I have in trigonometry, when I see them have problems later on in the course, I go back and ask them what's the definition for the sine of theta, cosine of theta, tangent of theta, they can't tell me. You need to know this definition right from the beginning, so I would just get it memorized right away. What I want to do next is go to the board and work some problems that involve this definition. For our first problem, I've written we want to find the six trigonometric functions of theta if the point negative 3, 4 is on the terminal side of theta. So let me begin by plotting that point. So I'll just draw on a coordinate system here real quick. The point negative 3, 4, I'm going to go back 3, so 1, 2, 3, and then up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So this will be the point x equal negative 3, y is equal to 4, and this is the terminal side of theta, our angle in standard position that goes through that point. Now, I have a little right triangle right here. This side is 3, this side is 4, so by the Pythagorean theorem, that side is going to be 5. So this is what I have. x is equal to negative 3, y is equal to 4, and r is equal to 5. So now I'm going to use these values of x, y, and r um, in my definition for the six trigonometric functions. I'm going to find sine, cosine, tangent, so on and so forth of this angle theta. So let's do that next. The sine of theta is equal to y divided by r, which would be 4 divided by 5. Cosine of theta will be x divided by r, which will be negative 3 over 5 so negative 3 fifths. And then the tangent of theta will be equal to y divided by x, which will be negative 4 thirds when I have 4 divided by 4 divided by negative 3. I'll just write that as negative 4 thirds. So here's my first three trigonometric functions, sine theta, cosine theta, and tangent theta. Now the other three trigonometric functions use the same ratios of x and y, they're just the reciprocals of these. So let's take a look at those. So first of all, cosecant theta, will be equal to r over y, so that's 5 over 4. Secant theta will be r over x. Well, r is 5, x is negative 3, so that's negative 5 thirds. And then cotangent theta will be equal to x over y, and so that will be negative 3 fourths. So here's my six trigonometric functions of this angle theta. And what I have to define theta here is a point on the terminal side. Now, this initial definition that I have for the six trigonometric functions specifically calls for a point on the terminal side of my angle. So that's the point x equal negative 3, y equal 4. And then I find the distance from the origin out to that point by the Pythagorean theorem. That's 5. So I have x, y, and r. Well, the six trigonometric functions are just all the different ratios I can make with those three numbers. 
So here's y over r, x over r, and y over x. Those are my three main trigonometric functions, and these are, in a way, secondary trigonometric functions, but r over y, r over x, and x over y. So I just have these definitions memorized, and I substitute these points in. This is the first kind of problem that you need to be able to work in trigonometry. Given a point on the terminal side of an angle, find the six trigonometric functions of that angle. Let's look at our next problem. This time I'm actually given an angle. This will be an angle, well, theta will be 135 degrees. Let's find sine, cosine, and tangent of 135. So what I'm looking for is this, sine of 135 degrees, cosine of 135 degrees, and I want tangent of 135 degrees. So in order to find sine, cosine, and tangent of 135 degrees, what I need is a point on the terminal side. So let's draw 135 degrees in standard position, find a point on the terminal side, and then use those coordinates to find these three trig ratios. Here we go. So here's 135 degrees in standard position. Now a point on the terminal side, we found this in the previous section, will be the point x equal negative 1, y equal positive 1 then the distance out to this point from here to here by the Pythagorean theorem is going to be square root 2. So the sine of 135 degrees will be the y coordinate, y coordinate divided by r, so 1 over square root 2. Cosine of 135 degrees will be the x coordinate divided by r, negative 1 over square root 2. And then the tangent will be the y coordinate divided by the x coordinate, which will be negative 1 over 1 or negative 1. So here are my, my sine of 135 degrees, cosine of 135, and tangent of 135. Now these will never change. Every time we have 135 degrees, this is the trigonometric sine, cosine, and tangent of 135 degrees. Now I use the same definition that I used in the previous problem, and that is our definition number one that requires that we find a point on the terminal side, and then from that we can use the definition to find the sine, which is y over r, cosine x over r, and then the tangent y over x. So again, here was my point, negative 1, 1, on the terminal side of 135 degrees. The distance from the origin out to that point is square root 2. What I want to do next is look at the algebraic signs, positive and negative, of the trigonometric functions. I've written fill in the table with plus or minus signs. Uh, and then here I have quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, quadrant 4. In this row right here, I want sine theta and cosecant theta, because sine theta is y divided by r, cosecant theta is r divided by y. They involve the same two numbers. Well, for the sine of theta or the cosecant of theta that both involve y and r, r is always positive. So the algebraic sign, positive or negative, of these two ratios right here will depend on the y coordinate. In quadrant one, y is positive, r is positive, so their ratio is going to be positive. In quadrant two, y is going to also be positive, r is still positive, so the algebraic sign, positive or negative, of these two ratios is going to be positive. Now when I get to quadrant three, any point in quadrant three will have a negative y coordinate. So y will be negative, r is positive, so the ratio will be negative. In quadrant four, any point in quadrant four has a y coordinate that's negative, so again, these two ratios will be negative. Next, I move over to cosine theta, which is the x coordinate divided by r, and secant theta, which is r divided by x. In quadrant one, x is positive. Since r is always positive, the ratio is positive. Any point in quadrant two will have a negative x-coordinate. So the x-coordinate of any point in quadrant two will be negative. r is positive, so the ratio is negative. In quadrant three, x is negative. r is positive, so the ratio is negative. In quadrant four, x is positive. r is positive, so the ratio is positive. Next, I move to tangent theta. It's the ratio of y to x. Well, in quadrant one, both any point in quadrant one, both coordinates x and y are positive, so the ratio is positive. In quadrant two, x is negative and y is positive, so their ratio is negative. In quadrant three, both x and y will be negative, so their ratio will be positive. And in quadrant four, x is positive but y is negative, so their ratio is negative. So we need to know by looking at the trigonometric function that we have over here and the quadrant in which theta terminates, what algebraic sign any of the six trigonometric functions will have. So fill in, we fill in this table like this, and you might want to do this a couple of times on your own, but this also goes back to that first definition that we have, the definition one for the six trigonometric functions, based on these ratios right here. 
So I simply ask myself, depending on what quadrant I'm in, what the algebraic sign of the x-coordinate, y-coordinate, and of course r is always positive, what those algebraic signs are, and then I know what these ratios are, positive or negative. Let's work another problem in which we use this definition. For problem number four, we say this. If cosine theta is 24 25ths and theta belongs to quadrant four, meaning theta terminates in quadrant four, find the other trig functions of theta. So this is what we have. Cosine of theta is equal to 24 25ths, and I know by the definition for cosine theta that that's the ratio of x to r. So what I'm going to say is this. Let's let x be equal to 24 and r be equal to 25. Now, just because the ratio of x to r is 24 25ths doesn't mean that x is 24 and r is equal to 25. But if the ratio of x to r is 24 25ths, we can let x be 24 and r be equal to 25. Remember, we can use any point that's on the terminal side of theta. So any point x, y in which the ratio of x to r comes out to be 24 25ths will work. So we'll make it easy on ourselves and let x be equal to 24 and r be equal to 25. Now let's apply the Pythagorean theorem. x squared plus y squared must be equal to r squared. So 24 squared plus y squared is equal to 25 squared. Now I'll just get a little calculator here. That means that y squared is going to be equal to 25 squared subtract 24 squared. So I do that on a calculator and I end up with 49. So I think 25 squared is 625 minus 24 squared. That comes out to be 49. That means that y is equal to plus or minus 7. So I have y is equal to either positive 7 or negative 7. Now is the time when I go over here and see the quadrant in which theta terminates. Theta terminates in quadrant 4, and in quadrant 4 all the points have negative y coordinates. So because theta terminates in quadrant 4, I'm going to say y is equal to negative 7. So here I have x, y, and r, and I had to use, first of all, the fact that cosine theta was 24 25ths to find x and r, and then by the Pythagorean theorem I get two choices for y, and over here theta is, since theta is in quadrant 4, y is equal to negative 7. Now let's find the, the six trigonometric functions of theta. The sine of theta is equal to y divided by r, so that's negative 7 over 25. Cosine of theta is equal to x over r, that's 24 over 25. Well, we knew that because that was originally given to us in the problem right here. Cosine of theta is 24 25ths. Okay, tangent theta is equal to um, y over x, so negative 7 divided by 24, negative 7 24 And then cosecant theta will be negative 25 sevenths, secant theta will be equal to 25 24 and cotangent theta will be negative 24 sevenths because those are the reciprocals of these right here. Instead of y over r, I have r over y for cosecant. Instead of x over r, I have r over x for secant and cotangent. Instead of being y over x, it's x over y. So I won't write those down. These are our three main trigonometric functions. The other three we can get right from these. So another problem here, problem number four, in which we again use definition one for the six trigonometric functions. Uh, let's look at one other problem. This time let's find sine, cosine, and tangent of theta if the terminal side of theta lies along the line y equal 2x in quadrant one. Well, the line y equal 2x, that's a line with a slope of two that goes through the origin. I'll just draw in that line real quickly. It looks like this, or approximately like this. This will be the terminal side of theta lies along this line in quadrant one. So theta is going to look like this, and I can just erase this part of it right here. So again, what I need in order to find sine, cosine, and tangent of theta is a point on the terminal side. So we need to find a point on the terminal side of theta. The terminal side of theta lies along the line y equal 2x in quadrant one. So let's substitute in x is equal to 1. When I do that, 2 times 1 is 2, so y is equal to 2. So here's the point right here. Let's say x equal 1, y equal 2. Now to find r, r is the square root of x squared plus y squared. So 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 1 plus 4 is 5, so square root 5. So I get r is equal to square root 5. Now, the sine of theta, y divided by r, so that will be 2 
over square root 5. Cosine theta, x divided by r, that will be 1 over square root 5. And then tangent theta, that will be y divided by x, which will be 2 divided by 1, which is 2. So here is sine theta, 2 over square root 5, cosine theta, 1 over square root 5, and tangent theta is equal to 2. Again, I use my same definition that requires a point on the terminal side of theta. Now you might notice here that I'm not rationalizing all my denominators. A lot of times in trigonometry, uh, 2 over square root 5 is just as good as what I would get if I rationalized this, which would be 2 square root 5 over 5. So there will be a lot of times when I'll just leave my ratios here in non-rationalized form. That is, I won't rationalize the denominator. You'll see it sort of depends on what the instructions are. If we say to rationalize the denominator, then go ahead and do it. You need to know how to rationalize the denominator. That's a skill from algebra that you need to know. We won't always do it, though, in, with these trigonometric ratios. So here's five problems that we've worked, all of which are a variation on this definition one for the trigonometric functions. What's the most important thing for you at this point in trigonometry? Memorizing that definition.